Zombies in video games are like reproductive fluids on your mother. They get everywhere. And our winner for best video intro goes to Bane Shake. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored. Please like and subscribe for more critically acclaimed intro segments. But seriously, folks, I know it's already an obvious fact to anyone familiar with the interactive industry, but think about how truly saturated our games are with the stumbling deceased. Military shooters? Got them. Cowboy GTA? More moving casualties than an industrial chipper at the bottom of a slip and slide. Far Cry 5 even tried doing radically different settings for downloadable content with Mars and Vietnam, but because Far Cry is not nearly as self-aware as it likes to pretend, it also did just more zombies for the other DLC pack. I don't think you guys even tried that time, Ubisoft. So what is a developer to do? Move on to new and original monsters in the hope of keeping things fresh and innovative? Sure, let's go with that. I want you to imagine for a moment. You're on YouTube, a young and cheeky video host has sucked you in with a decently amusing intro, and then WHAM! Right in the first example, he drops the notorious N-word. No, I'm not actually going to say it. Settle down. It's a metaphor. Sort of. Because, in the world of Fallout, the word zombie actually does get used as something pretty close to a racial slur against the irradiated nuclear survivors known properly as ghouls. Which, side note, ghouls also seems kinda racist. These ugly bastards may look like Hillary Clinton when she hasn't bathed in the blood of a virgin under the full moon in order to restore some semblance of humanity in her dark sorceress rituals, but they are, assuredly, not zombies. They're just more wrinkled than the California Raisins pairs of California Raisins. However, it's the feral ghouls who are really pushing the technicality here. Feral ghouls, simply put, are ghouls who are feral. Only took me eight hours of gameplay to figure out the deep hidden meaning of their name, too. They do everything you'd expect zombies to do pretending to be dead for a while, crawling around like hideous babies, zerg rushing the player, and so on. So why aren't they zombies, you might be asking? Cause that's racist, you scumbag. If you watched my original countdown video a while back, you may remember how I described Dishonored as a bunch of other game titles porking each other. But like any good orgy planner, I left out one key participant. That's right, the dead. Okay, technically the sick and dying. But to be fair, the sick and dying are also really good at ruining a f party too. So, on top of steampunk satanic wizard assassin mayhem already running amok in poor old Dunwall, we have a horrible rat plague where everyone risks exposure to the disease, turning them into people called Weepers. Weepers are actually still alive, which is sometimes the case in zombie media, spreading the disease and swarming unlucky individuals in order to kill said individuals. Still seems pretty zombie. What really makes them more not zombie than yes zombie is just how much humanity they still have left. Turns out, they're somewhat in control of their own actions when they attack, and they attack for a reason. They long for the sweet release of death. Not dissimilar to me when I've eaten too much of the pizza I've christened the Mad Bastard. Buffalo sauce, pepperoni, banana peppers, jalapenos. Try it, it's delicious and you might regret it later. Anyway, weepers are in so much agony, they're actually hoping you kill them when they attack. It's classic suicide by cop. Except the cop in this case is a steampunk satanic wizard assassin of sorts, which to be fair would dramatically improve the later seasons of Law & Order SVU. Three people doesn't make an enterprise. But the thousands of self-pitying souls comprising the incel does. The what? Imagine if halfway into National Treasure, 
Nicolas Cage just had to start fighting inbred Nazi golems. Maybe that was the secret in the President's book that we never got to find out about in the second movie? National Treasure fanbase, we need to rise up! Having now meta-forgotten my very own example, we have Uncharted, everyone's favorite Nolan North-driven spectacle, Don't watch his channel. very much followed in the shoes of its inspiration, Indiana Jones, and like Indy, the first few games leaned towards a dark, supernatural twist behind the treasure. Drake is after El Dorado, which he discovers is a golden statue, which he then discovers is a golden sarcophagus. I don't know what the guy inside was suffering from, but when people open it up, his stank turns them, well, very reminiscent of zombies. Known as the Descendants, a bunch are already running around because the Nazis stumbled across the sarcophagus years prior and have apparently been inbreeding little mutant descendants for a while now. This is why we keep the undead away from sex parties. The world of the geriatric parchments is no stranger to the undead. Arena, Daggerfall, Oblivion, and Shadow Key all contain variations of our famous spooky shamblers. If for some reason you actually f***ing know about Shadow Key, good job by the way. And in these games, they were even just called zombies. Skyrim decided to go and mix things up though. I mean, it does have something it calls a zombie whenever a necromancer turns a dead body into a free sidekick. So technically my video's title is inaccurate now, but it was just me being a smartass in the first place, so you can go fuck yourself. No, the ones I'm accusing of denying their undead familial ties are actually the... Draugr? Drugger. Draugr. Draugr. <laughs> These unpronounceable bastards are actually drawn from Norse mythology, which is why they show up in the newest God of War. In mythology, they can also do creepy feats, like growing really big and driving animals mad through proximity alone. Later mythologies even associate them with sailors who drowned. All of this would definitely constitute a major difference from zombies if these guys actually did any of these things. They don't. They just rise from their tombs and attack. Much like the other zombies in the Retiree Documents series. Get back in the zombie pit, ya heads. Surprisingly for a typically more all-ages-appropriate series, Star Wars is actually no stranger to zombies. But you have to be patient enough to sit down and read a book. And considering my target audience chuckles when I say the word dong, I have no interest in going for something classy like literature here. Thankfully, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order... Revengeance has me covered on the undead. Over on the planet Dathomir, one of the darkest places you can go in Star Wars canon, there used to be a race of dark side practicing witches known as the Night Sisters. They died. And their carefully treated corpses are ritualistically, um, placed in drooping sacks all over the place. The one remaining Night Sister, Marin, who is way hotter than a space necromancer has any right to be, gets tired of these Jedi who are fallen ordering all over her planet, and uses dark side magic to bring back her sisters. Sure, they might be explicitly undead corpses who swarm and claw at you, but they are so not zombies. Because the zombies are in the book, remember? These guys are totally different. Me. Why is she so hot? Guys, I, I think I have issues. Ask someone who has ever casually abused hallucinogens while playing Super Mario, and they will tell you mushroom men are scary. I'm inclined to believe them, too. You see, reality itself has a fungus that turns ants into tiny little zombies known by people doing more valuable things with their lives than me, as cordyceps. In the world of Naughty Dog's The Last of Us, this stuff has jumped ship from taking over the minds of picnic ruiners to taking over the minds of ice cap ruiners. Later stages are truly visceral to look at, 
with fungal growths completely encompassing the heads of its victims. But early infectees are plagued, see what I did there, by looking like, well, you probably follow at this point in the video, gray skin, cannibalistic, frequently transmuting infection by biting. It's clearly not Sasquatch they're emulating. Although, I gotta say, if you do happen to meet one of these not Zeds, you should definitely invite them over to a party. I hear he'd be a fungi. Wait, shit, I pronounced it wrong. Can I start the joke over? You know, I'm probably being an asshole by including Dead Space's necromorphs on this list. Visceral Games truly did everything they could to distinguish these alien-infected mutants from your run-of-the-mill cadaver bastards. These are dead bodies mutated and conjoined beyond any normal human forms, often to the point they are barely recognizable as humans. Like that guy should clearly be a gorilla, but it's actually like 12 dead bodies glued together. Necromorphs also don't follow usual zombie conventions either. They either need to be near religious space rocks or corpse pterodactyls in order to be reanimated. And then most necromorphs also won't try to actually eat a human, and the ones that do clearly resemble ice mummies more than anything George Romero made definitive. So why the hell would I include these on my list if they're so clearly different? Well, frankly, everyone already does it, just lumping it in with zombies anyway. So, that's right kids, you should definitely cave into bandwagon arguments. Don't even bother resisting peer pressure. I mean, here's an article from Kotaku straight up reducing the hive mind from the end of the first game as a giant zombie slug. And well, who can argue with Kotaku? I read on Kotaku that it's better than Civ 5 with the Brave New World expansion pack. Thanks, SVU. What's worse than a zombie? That's a question many feeble-minded fools have asked, all of whom have clearly never heard of the horrendous monster known as the Goatsy. Don't Google it. I'll tell you what's worse than a zombie. Cyborg zombies. You see, in Mass Effect, there are frequently fought enemies called husks who are created when a normal, squishy human is impaled on a big spike and filled with technology and turned into a less squishy, reanimated, dead human. That's freaky. But there's even something worse than that. Mass Effect also has enemies called Thorian Creepers, which are like cyborg zombies without the cyborg. So zombies. Instead of destructive alien tech, these are normal people being controlled by an ancient plant. Okay, that sounds way less scary than what I said for the husks, so I'm changing my mind back. These cyborg zombies are obviously worse. Take the Asari husks, banshees, which have spooky robot nipples. Or look at the Turian-made brutes, which resemble... gorillas. Hold up, guys. Mass Effect brutes just ripped off Dead Space's brutes. Not only do I have to blatantly deny that these creatures resemble zombies, now I have to deny any resemblance to necromorphs, too. That is extra work, and I certainly did not just type out 2,000 words just to do any work. F*** it, I'm done. These are all zombies, originality is dead, gaming is basically just intensive training for how to desecrate bodies. I don't even care anymore.